Welcome back once more. We're here at the Salem Observer, and right now I have a special guest, Richard Noyce, who was the, uh, well, partially owner. Uh, you said it was a corporation type of thing, and uh, he was the publisher and editor. But well, I was the, the major stockholder far and away, so that, uh, uh, that, that, that other people had joined me and helped formed the organization, which was a carryover from some previous newspapers I'd owned and then sold, mm -hmm. uh, at any rate then. Now, you were talking earlier about uh, how you actually were started a paper in, I forget, it wasn't Claremont, it, it was... was uh, it was in, uh, in uh, Peterborough and Peterborough. in Jaffrey, and uh, that, of course, they're associated with Mount Monadnock, and mm -hmm. right, so then right. what we chose to call that publication was the Monadnock Ledger, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I uh, can't claim many uh, distinctions, the only distinction I can carry in life is I think I'm the only person in New Hampshire who has founded two newspapers that are still viable. Yeah. <laughs> Right, the, exactly. the, uh, the Monadnock Ledger still is an excellent newspaper, and it's and I sold it to a family named Turley Brothers, two mm -hmm. brothers who were good newspaper people, and they really made a crackerjack paper out of it. So, so what brought you to Salem and uh, to the Salem Observer? The fact that uh, newspapers, the size of a newspaper, the size a newspaper is limited to, is a factor of the population of the area that it can logically locally serve. Mm -hmm. And Peterborough was much smaller than than uh, uh, than Salem. I reached the kind of maximum uh, of what was possible for this the Peterborough area, and uh, uh, but Salem was kind of famous in the newspaper field. All of us would say would say you would get together and we'd say, "Isn't that interesting? That Salem gets awful big, and it doesn't have any newspaper." That's, what good. Is that? That's good. So I came. I decided to come to Salem, and I came over here and and, and intended to to start from scratch. But I got over here and realized there was a, an excellent man and, and, uh, and with the help of a, a, an excellent woman who was still with the, obser uh, with the Observer, uh, uh, publishing a free circulation paper. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what they called it. I don't believe they called it the Observer. It was called something else. But anyway, I bought it and applied for a second class post postage so that it could be paid circulation right. and uh, changed the name to the Salem Observer and we've started from there. How much did you charge for the paper? Do you recall? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was not very much. But one of the the you, you charge you don't charge much for the paper because really what you sell in the newspaper business is a red paper, a paper that's being read. Right. And if you charge too much per copy, you you limit it cuts down your product. It's like you have less of an inventory to sell. Right. So you want the biggest circulation you can get. But you want a circulation that is validly reading it because advertisers, if they were to buy space in, in a publication that may be selling a lot of copies but nobody was reading it, they wouldn't get any results and they wouldn't continue to advertise. Right. So really what you have to produce, your product, in the Ford Motor Company builds cars. Anybody in the newspaper bill, uh, business uh, builds a red newspaper, a oh. newspaper that is being read. Right, right. Well, what is the difference between the Observer today and the Observer when you had first started? It's much larger and much uh, more solidly based and has become, uh, of course, I, I said at the start that Salem had no, pub, no publicly owned newspaper. The, the Lawrence Eagle Tribune, of course, really kind of owned the, the, this area in those mm -hmm. days. And it was, uh, it was what everybody read and there was no thought of, uh, of reading anything but the Lawrence Eagle Tribune. And, uh, but that, that is a thing of the past. The Tribune has since uh, changed its uh, format to some extent and publishes the New Hampshire Tribune. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're an excellent organization and they, they, they're viable and, and they're, they do a good job here, as they always have done. But the Observer really, I think, has been the people of Salem have taken it on as the paper. Right, right. There's a little, little it story. It truly is saying, a community. I know yeah. the Eagle Tribune tries to uh, point out that they are a community paper, and they are, but at a larger scale. Yeah. And, and I really believe that the Salem we Observer has a We have a little a place. saying in the newspaper business, and it goes way from the way back. Uh, people say, Gee, it must be true, I saw it in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the, the version of it, we got the Salem Observer at the point where people would say, it must be true, I saw it in the Observer. So. Yeah, right, right. Well, that's great. And, of course, what, that is true now. So. In particular, um, can you recall what things you brought to the paper uh, having been a part? Well, there was an interesting thing going on in the newspaper business at that time. It, it was a production. In fact, people, all until the, about World War II, about that time, all newspapers were what were called 
hot lead. They were printed, you melted type and put, and then recreated in the form of, you did it with a linotype and it was a very expensive process and so printing was done from hot type. Mm -hmm. Not it wasn't hot when it was being printed. But it was hot when it was being formed, right. and and uh, it was uh, stamped onto the paper. Mm. Then the process in World War II, uh, and I think this has to do, had to do with the uh, forming uh, in in army in in military units forming a way to get the word out. Uh, they they went to. Uh, uh, Offset printing, what's called offset printing, right, right. which is uh, uh, or lithographic, and actually the reason it's called lithographic printing is that litho was a word that means stone, and graphic means printing from stone. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't print from stone as type; they changed the surface of the stone so it either would or would not accept ink, I see. and yeah, made it yeah. inkophobic or inkophilic. And th th that was the start of offset printing, and that came along at about the, during the World War II. And so, uh, what was really beginning to happen in all over the country, but in New Hampshire in particular? Um, a matter of fact, I established the the, the, the Monadnock Legion that I established was the first offset paper in New Hampshire, ah. and but I believe Bob Finney had started with yes, I know he had started with offset here, and so they were accustomed to to uh, the page layout, the paste ups, the paste ups as opposed to the the, the one good thing about uh, offset printing is that it, it's you what you do is create a piece of paper uh, or a, pa a surface area th thick as a paper and then take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. if, and so if, if something happened to that, it was easy to put it back together. But in, in the old-fashioned hot type printing, if anybody stumbled and, and let a page form fall, it was fall on the floor. It yeah. was forever oh, putting yeah, it back. Yeah, it was yeah. a, but it, uh, so it was a clumsy operation and expensive and very difficult and, and very costly mm -hmm. and, and, uh, at that time. But, but, but Bob Finney had already started, and that's what, one of the things that attracted me, he had already started the the uh, offset printing the the uh, uh, the process and I was the pioneer in New Hampshire of the process and so it was a logical logical Excellent. for me to buy his operation he uh, uh, um, it, it was an amicable uh, we we uh, became friends and remained friends and, right. and uh, so it, but it, but we started from there now. I'd said, uh, we're talking about the observer, of course, aren't we? Right, right. And I want to get into the conversation, the fact that uh, uh, something that in our earlier conversation you know that I believe, that the person who is more responsible than any other person, including me, for there being a Salem observer, mm -hmm. is still with the newspaper, and she is a crackerjack lady named Elsie Tulanian. Yes, she is. And she yes. was Elsie Bocus when I bought the paper. Is she right? married yeah. George Tulanian, and uh, unfortunately he was killed in an automobile accident or was hit by a car, oh. and we, so we lost uh, George and Elsie right. too. But uh, uh, at any rate, Elsie Tulanian has been with the paper from the beginning, and I feel that there wouldn't be a Salem of you. It wouldn't have been possible for me to get the paid circulation newspaper up where it belongs had it not been for the uh, skill uh, of Elsie. And the reason I pause saying skill was it's more than one particular skill. Mm -hmm. uh, her really essential skill is loving people. She loves people. She enjoys talking with them and that makes her a good salesperson. Right, she, right. she loves you. She likes nothing better, and she has from the beginning, than to, to talk with you about what your problem is uh, in a business. Now, you're mm -hmm. a businessman, and uh, well, what do you think, where do you think you have some more customers? If, well, let us try to see if we can't find those customers for you, and, that, and she'd get into it, and, and, uh, uh, and that was how she pursued, and that, of course, is what the newspaper business is about, is being read. Uh, you, you, there, it's a two, there are two halves to the newspaper business. You are doing a service to the community by increasing its communication and kind of cementing the community together and giving it a sense of oneness and so forth. Newspaper is dependent upon its touch with the community. Mm -hmm. uh, the phrase I've just used, it must be so I saw it in the observer. I mean, yes, if people right, right. characteristically say that, you know that you're successfully producing the paper. So it'll be based on communications, again, still, and uh, reaching to the people. Exactly, exactly. Excellent. Being read by the people. Being exactly. Read by the people. Or being felt needed by the people. Because right. we all do need, we, you know, we're social animals. We human beings live together. We don't live isolated. And therefore, we have to talk to each other, and we would, simply wouldn't be, un, we wouldn't be comfortable or productive 
pr productive if we didn't weren't able to interrelate with mm, not just our true. family but with our communities and even our state and even our country. Uh, so that question of connectedness is is that probably is anything what a newspaper is? It's an element in connectedness.